This is actually my second attempt at making a wooden switchblade. The first didn't work, but it helped me to see how I could improve the design so that it would work. To make it easier to build from wood, this is more than twice as big as it would be if I made it entirely from metal. Wood has limitations, especially on strength, and metal can be a lot thinner and smaller. I'm using Baltic birch plywood for most of the parts. I don't have any that's thin enough, so I'm cutting thicker pieces down to about a quarter inch thick and sanding it after the cut. The wood needs to be pretty smooth for the blade to move in and out without getting hung up. The first part that I'm working on is the most complex. I really don't know if it has a real name in a real switchblade knife, but I've been thinking about it and calling it the launcher in my head. I call it that because it launches the blade out when you slide the switch forward and then it launches the blade backwards again when you slide the switch back. Anyway, it has a bunch of very carefully marked out areas that need to be cut out. I was going to use my bandsaw to make some of these cuts, but figured I'd get better results just doing it all by hand with a coping saw and a few files. There are two V-shaped notches on either side of the launcher and they push the springs that hold the blade in position. These have to be done accurately for the mechanism to work as it should. The way this works can be hard to get your head around, but there's a pretty good slow motion scene at the end of the video that really makes it clear. Now don't skip ahead, keep watching. The launcher has springs on each end and they fit into the recess that I'm cutting here. I'm usually not a big fan of fast motion video, but I threw some in here for those of you out there that like this kind of thing. I think this one here is actually 32 times its normal speed. And then some work with the file to clean up the slot. Like I said before, wood has limitations, so I decided to make these parts from steel. I call these the bullets. Again, they probably have a proper name, but I don't know what it is. Besides, this version of the switchblade mechanism is, to the best of my knowledge, my own, so I can call the parts whatever I want. Anyway, since the bullets need to be thinner and U-shaped, I didn't think that wood would be strong enough. After I cut it out and filed the slot smooth, I cleaned up the burrs left from the cutting disc on my big homemade grinder. Then it's back to the launcher to cut out the recesses where the bullets will fit and slide back and forth. So far so good. I can put the springs in temporarily with hot melt glue and test the mechanism. Next up, the blade. There's no weird name for that since every knife has one. I'm using plywood again and making it into a typical double edge shape. The blade needs a pin that slots into the bullets that will push the blade back and forth. I'm using a number 8 machine screw threaded into the hole that I just drilled. Then I can cut that off to the right length with the grinder that has no guard. Now that all of the major parts are done, it's time for some assembly. These smaller parts are just softwood, cut down to size, and glued on. The blade needs to slide freely back and forth, and I checked that before putting the launcher on. These other small parts guide the launcher as it moves back and forth. 
With the blade in and pushed all the way back, I marked the notch that the spring will catch in and just used a file to cut that out. The springs are a piece of maple cut on the table saw to about 1 16th of an inch thick. I put the first spring in place to mark it to the right length. After cutting it off, I sanded down the edge partly so that it will move freely and won't get hung up on the bottom. After it's been glued in and left to dry for a few hours, I tested it out to see how it worked. Here you'll notice that I went from two springs down to one on each end, and that's because the two springs were meshed together and wouldn't compress enough. As it turns out, one spring is powerful enough anyway. Exactly the same procedure with the front wooden spring, except this time I sanded it down a bit thinner on my one inch bell sander. I made simple covers for the spring openings on the sides and glued those on. Time for another test to see if it works forwards as well as back. And it does, and that's a relief. Last thing to make is the top cover, but it needs some grooves cut into it to clear the springs. It would have been better if I had the exact size springs that match the thickness of the parts so that I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm working with what I have. Not a big deal anyway, it doesn't take long to cut them out with a sharp chisel. Gluing in the top cover is the point of no return and I triple checked to make sure that everything still works before I did that. After the glue dried I did some shaping on the handle. It's still really clunky looking even though I did what I could to make it slimmer. I even cut some finger notches in it to make it look more menacing, but instead they made it look even more like a fish. Finishing touches to sharpen the blade, although I don't think I can make it, you know, keen enough to cut paper or shave with. Anyway, here's the operation of the mechanism at four times slow motion. And here it is again at eight times slow motion. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your allies, and subscribe to my channel for many more like this.